All right, MMA Maniacs, it's time once again for Split Decision, your weekly MMA podcast brought to you from the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios. It is Bueller and Dodge at the mics, ready to break down some news and some fight cards and whatever else we can find in the wide world of MMA. You can find us on Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, our website, splitdecisionmma.com, and of course, newly added to iHeartRadio.com. Look us up. We're one of the uh, few MMA podcasts they have, and of course, we're the best. So <laughs> just bookmark that one and listen to it every week. I'm just saying, it's worth it. Tell your friends, like us on Facebook, uh, Split Decision MMA podcast or on twitter and instagram it's sd underscore mma big thanks to strongboardbalance.com uh they're our sponsor so thank you very much strongboardbalance.com yeah change the way you work out get on board at strongboardbalance.com all right starting off with the news today <laughs> Paige van zandt is going to be main eventing her first show against joanne calderwood in I- las vegas december 10th ufc fight night i'm pretty excited for that fight i'm really excited for fight i i i, I it's going to be a bang fest. Yeah. I, well, And then there's going to be a fight, too. Everybody's going to want to, for sure. <laughs> Watch this fight. <laughs> <coughs> it's a nice step up in competition for Paige Van Zandt. Oh, definitely. Uh, the, the, it, do you think title implications, or do you think it's a little ways from that? Well, you know, uh, a couple of us got confused this week. Uh, we started spreading it around, saying that uh, she was fighting Jezerjek. Oh, for a title. For a title. Yeah. And then uh, luckily one of us went and reread it, and we're like, no, 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 it's Joy Calderwood. Calderwood. Joy Calderwood. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Sorry, everybody. Sorry for those rumors. <laughs> yeah, so uh, she is ranked above Joanne Calderwood. Joanne Calderwood's number eight in Paige Van Zandt. Just moved to number six. Um, fighting Jezek is going to be uh, Valerie Latanu, which is number 10. Yeah, it's... I don't know Remember, how... she was supposed to fight Claudia. Claudia's injured. Right. So they had... Uh, I, I don't know how you how you, it jumps that you, high. You move past somebody that you haven't beat. I know we see it in all the divisions, uh-huh. but it's just weird to me. And I and I we've had a couple fighters come forward and say like I don't know how somebody's better than me if they haven't even haven't had to face me yet. Right, for sure. You know, I mean, the biggest thing is McGregor right now. Yeah, you know they got him pulled above other people. A he lot had, of people. Yeah, that he has never fought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> And again, you know, the UFC doesn't do this, right? Is this the media and... Yeah, the media is the one that picks the rankings. Right. And I mean, flat out, I mean, when we're talking about the Misha Tate thing, she has come out this week and said she understands the business decision to have Holly Holm fight. She was heartbroken, and she thinks it sucks, but she understands the business decision. You're going to have somebody now that's undefeated go against somebody that's undefeated again in Ronda Rousey. Holly Holm's undefeated, you know what I mean? Right, she and, it, and it's it, not something we've already seen. You've already exactly, lost twice. Exactly. You've she already underst- lost that's twice. why she says she understands the business decision. She just didn't. Underst- she just thinks it sucks. I think she understood it the first time. She just knew that if she ran her mouth for a little while, she'd get a little media <laughs> out of it. Uh, UFC has recently signed heavyweight Bil- Bil- Balai Balai Mak- Makov Makov, who is the uh, 2015 World Wrestling Champion, uh, who is now. Meddled in both freestyle and Greco. Six foot five, two eighty five. Yeah. So. Oh, from Dagestan. From Don't Dagestan. they do that uh, bare knuckle? Yeah. 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 That's nice. So, um, again, Nurmagomedov is one of the Dagestan uh, fighters. These guys are, are coming there. He's he has, uh, like I said, won both in freestyle and Greco wrestling, which is pretty impressive. Um, so we'll have to see how he does in the UFC, how he transitions in MMA. I think it's it's going to be a refreshing heavyweight. Yeah, somebody Definitely. that has has some instead of just big heavy hand skills. <laughs> exactly. Most, most of the heavyweights, other than I mean, you look at Nogueira, just retired. You have Frank Mir, uh, and <laughs> I can't believe we were trying. You're saying like somebody just has, stands out, and we brought up well, one of the dads that just fought. I'm saying other skills <laughs> besides striking. I'm saying you know Frank Mir is a submission artist. I mean, he's known for his submissions. <sighs> Nogueira was known for his submissions. This is somebody now who is also. In a heavyweight division, that's going to be known for the submissions. That's not uh, Hodger Gracie. Yeah, but but I mean, being but it's in the, being in the likes of of Nurmagomedov and stuff. I mean, you're we're going to see him want to stand and bang. Too. I hope so. Yeah, I definitely hope so. Um, heavyweight. Speaking of Pedro Hizo, UFC legend, has just retired officially from fighting. I thought he retired like five years ago. To be honest, it's not official till they till they say. Yeah, he was twenty and eleven, uh, nine and five in the UFC. Uh, overall, though, lost <laughs> towards the end of his career. Uh, I believe he's one of the original UFC champions. Let's look that up. 
Looking, looking. IFA. Yep, there you go. For the UFC heavyweight, lost. Uh, nope, never made it as a champion. Interesting. I know he always fought for the title. He fought Randy Couture twice. He also fought Kevin Randleman back at UFC 26. But always, always in the mix, Mister Pedrozzo. Heavy, oh, yeah. heavy hands, man. Yeah, he'll be in the. They'll put him in the Pioneer. Yeah, definitely goes to Hall of Fame. Has yeah, to go to Hall of definitely Fame. Definitely put him in the Pioneer wing. That'd be great. Uh, Justino Cyborg's. Uh, what is it? What was their last name? Excuse me, Chris Just Cyborg Justino. Justino. <laughs> Dodge has a cold, everybody. Yeah, if you good. can't tell already, <laughs> not feeling good. He's not. He's not one hundred percent. Will be, and he's still here. Still here, Joey. Joey. <laughs> Who doesn't want to get anybody sick? I don't care if I get you all sick. I'm still showing up. No, for Joey's, the love of the podcast. Yeah, Joey's dead, though. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even make sense this morning on Does the rock show. Diverticulitis? <laughs> Something. <laughs> <laughs> Too many dickitis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she will fight her first catchweight at 140 at Invicta 15 in November. An opponent has not been named. This is her first step towards Ronda Rousey and going into the UFC. Finally, I mean, we we got we told we were told this what last year that she was going to do this, right? And then something happened where she couldn't do it. I don't know. Well, she actually got she already did the one thirty five. She already did it once. Did she cut? Make an actual cut? She made an actual cut. They wanted to see if she could do it, and she she did it. It wasn't for a fight. She didn't have to weigh in, but I remember her posting picture of her on the scale, and she got down to one thirty five. Wow. So we'll we'll have to see how this goes. Uh, Ronda Rousey has said that she would feel her career is unfinished if she didn't get a fight with Cyborg. She will not wait forever, and she will not budge on moving up to a catchweight. Right. Well, and she's she said basically. I think Joey had pointed it out that she's going to stick around for maybe two more years. I think two, yeah, maybe three. Along those lines, yeah. Right, and then she's going to go have some kids with uh, somebody. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> she doesn't have a boyfriend right now. She's currently single. Oh, whatever. She's going on a date with a marine yeah. now. Hoppa. Dayton Hoffa. <laughs> uh, ben Askren going to defend his belt against Luis Santos in 1FC. This is going to be a rematch November 17th inside the Singapore Indoor Stadium. Are you excited? I I, I think Santos is actually going to win. I yeah? Think, I think Askren is going to see his first loss. Really? Oh, yeah. I went back, and uh, a lot of people have been talking about, like, it was really close, so I, it was hard to find. I, went, I think the kid, if he worked on some stuff – and to tell you the truth, I, th- I think Askren has kind of got complacent. Uh-huh. And I think this kid's going to be a little more hungry. I, I think Askren could actually see a loss. All right. A uh, little strange news here. A uh, New Jersey doctor has recently come out and said that there was a fight that took place in New York in an unregulated MMA bout where one of the fighters tested positive for HIV. Now, the reason this was allowed to happen is because in New York right now, there is no sanctioning body for MMA. Everything is unregulated. It is not allowed as a regulated sport. But you can still have the sport. They've still done it uh, in an unrelated amateur bout. It's all amateur. It doesn't work as a pro record. It's only as an amateur record. Um, It just boggles my mind. If you were to at least let somebody sanction it, you can regulate it, and there's some form of safety. But if if you don't have to sanction it or regulate it, and it still happens, it seems like you should still be on the hook for whatever does happen. <laughs> right? Yeah. They said they they were uh, they found cases when fighting where people were fighting with Hep B, Hep C, and in one case, HIV. Fighters uh, continuing to compete with brain injuries, heart conditions, and retinal tears. How long? Uh, Tommy Gunn, he got to fight almost, what, another nine, ten months? It was a while. With, they, with HIV? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not completely unheard of. No. But uh, really unheard of. But still I don't. I, crazy. Absolutely. I don't, crazy. especially in MMA. I don't think it's safe. Oh, no. sharp elbows. Any I, anything where there's blood exchanges. I don't care if it's boxing or not. Any any. And once he bled on the mat, I mean, what do you do? You hydrogen peroxide that thing like nobody's business and burn it. I think if you willfully fight with HIV, that should be like a criminal thing. No, like I said, Tommy Gunn. He fought in the WBA willfully though. That's the thing. He knows he has H. Like if it's somebody who didn't. No. Didn't did what if you didn't tell people that you had it? Yeah, but I mean, obviously no, everybody no, no, knew. No. Like my thing is, is if somebody, no. yeah, if you know you if have you HIV, know you have it, and you're going into a fight, and you don't tell anybody, you don't tell anybody. That, that should, should be, be criminal. criminal. I agree with that. Yeah, but if it was disclosed to other people, they just didn't want to mention it. 
then that's something all that somebody else yeah, is that's... somebody else should be in trouble for that. Yeah, but I mean, the other fighter should at least know. No. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm on board with that because obviously that doesn't happen in regulated MMA. If you have anything that's contagious, you're not allowed to fight. Really? Yeah. They scan you for infantigo. They scan I know for some of those guys got that shit on their elbow. They had the one, the one guy that remember he had like dengue fever. They wouldn't let him fight. Oh, that's right. They had the guy that had he did he had uh, Thiago Silva didn't he had hepatitis C until he got it uh, under control. They on his him program, fight. Yeah, yeah, he had to get on a shot program. He had to get on a shot program until he got under control until it's non contagious. Hmm. So then the big news that came out this week. This it, is just wild. Nick Diaz stood before the Nevada State Athletic Commission to face his failed drug test following his fight at UFC 183 with Anderson Silva. Remind, reminder, Anderson Silva tested positive for steroids, a performance-enhancing drug, was given one-year suspension. And only 25% of his purse. 25% of his if purse. I remember right. However, the Nevada State Athletic Commission has fined Nick Diaz 33% of his purse, which is $150,000. And giving him the strictest, steepest penalty they ever have in the history of the Mass State Athletic Commission, five-year ban from the sport. Yeah, I mean, besides the fact that it's not going to hold up. Five-year ban from the sport, which is absolutely insane to me. It's I've, absolutely insane. Because even like... For a couple reasons. Okay, go ahead. Let's start off with number one. They just recently told everybody, these are going to be our, our guidelines that we will be going off of from now on. Those guidelines stated that if you are caught with marijuana in your system for the first time, the first offense, you will be, let's see, we have it right here. We will be in 18 month suspension and 30% of your purse, 18 months. So if, if they say that this is his first time, he should only be since implementing the rules, since implementing the rules, it should be 18 months. Right. However, they're saying this is his third time. He did get busted once before he did get busted again. He's been busted twice. So even if you go down to the third offense, the third offense is a 36-month suspension. That's three years, not five. Right. So they're not even following their own rules that they set forth September 1st and said this is what our, our guidelines are going to be. It seems very, very personal. I mean, Mike Tyson bit a man's ear off <laughs> and got a one-year suspension. It's well, it's, John Jones tested positive for cocaine and didn't get a suspension because they said they can't test anything – it's out of competition. competition. Now, right. what's happening with, with Nick Diaz's test is that he was given three tests the night of his fight. So this is during competition. Outside of competition, there's nothing they can do. They can get right. upset at him. They can say, oh, we don't want you to smoke weed. Right. But there's nothing we can do because you're not in competition. In competition, you're only allowed to have 150 uh, was it nanograms per milliliter in your system of cannabis metal buds. Right. Okay? And it's for him that they actually raised the number. They actually raised the number to 150. <laughs> he was tested at 7 o'clock, 7.12. 48 is what came up. That's a pass. Nowhere right. near 150. Right. Nowhere near it. They tested him at 10. So they tested him before his fight, right before his fight, immediately before his fight, because he didn't go on until at 9, 10 right. o'clock. Right. They tested him immediately after his fight, 733. Meaning he was smoking pot while he was fighting Anderson Silva. <laughs> then they tested him at 1150 before midnight and it was down to 61 again might, a pass now they, the thing that's crazy about this the two passes the 48 and the 61 were done by the world anti-doping agency sports medicine research and testing laboratory in salt lake city both of those came back negative the middle test that was way over 733 was done by a non-accredited Testing facility called Quest Diagnostics. That's who does that's does all our blood so, tests here in town. It is a workplace testing right. facility, not an athletic testing right. facility. Right. This is also the same testing facility that back in oh, what year was that? Back in the time when that uh, Sean Shirk got tested for, when he got tested for positive for steroids. Right. It was Quest Diagnostics that said that they tested positive. What about Kung Lee's? Was Kung Quest... Lee's was completely different. Yeah. Okay. Completely different. This was, though, they used Quest Diagnostics back in the... And he was able to overturn that. He took three lie detector tests and was able to prove that they had used dirty vials to, to collect his blood. Right. Well, I mean, Nick Diaz ain't going to pass no lie detector test about not no. smoking pot. He says he smokes pot, but right. he does not during during competition. Again, the fact... You would think they would take... It takes anywhere between four to ten days for marijuana to leave your system. Not 70 minutes. So there's right. no way that he could jump into the cage, not smoke pot... 
Apparently, smoke while he's fighting Anderson Silva and then unsmoke it to, un- to pass the next test. Right. There's no way. Yeah, and I can understand from going to the 48 to the 61 because, I mean, there's... Pumping blood through your yeah, system. Pumping through your system is coming out of your fat. It, it's your coming body. out of your fat. Right. But to go to 700 and then go back down to 60? Unless he just got done with the bong rip. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, I mean, he's, that's like leaving the cage. We're going to test you. I wonder, 39? You know what? As big as a smartass as he is, I wonder if he put something in that piss test. Like a dab. He just dropped a dab in there. So the big thing is, is that everyone's trying, including his lawyers, were saying, obviously, there's a problem, there's a problem with Quest Diagnostics no, test. Well, there's no consistency in the test. There's no consistency in the test. If you, okay, we're going to give you three tests. Two of them are passed. One of them is failed. Isn't it majority rules? Isn't it? <laughs> I have two, <laughs> it two passes and a fail. Okay, obviously something happened wrong with the fail. Ty goes to the runner. Right? <laughs> He did, again, he did test positive for marijuana back in 2007, and they gave him a uh, uh, one-year suspension. Nine years ago. Excuse me, nine-month suspension. Nine years ago. In 2013, he popped dirty, UFC 143, he was given a one-year suspension. To go from that to a five-year suspension is absolutely insane. You look at guys like Josh Barnett, who tested positive for steroids back in the UFC. He was given a warning. He tested positive again. He was stripped of his belt from the UFC. Not from the Athletic Commission. From the UFC. Right. And then he tested positive again when he was getting ready to fight for affliction. And they dropped him from the card and the entire company folded. But, okay, okay. And, but another thing, too. We have to remember. They, these people before a certain time weren't testing positive for steroids. They were testing positive for an abnormal... No, team. no, no. This is steroids. These were steroids? These were steroids. Now, other guys like Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen got busted for steroids the first time he got busted. Okay. After the first time he fought Anderson Silva. The second time was elevated levels of testosterone, testosterone and HGH. I mean, he actually had a bunch of human growth hormone. That's different. He retired. Stefan Bonner. Nine months suspension for the first time he passed t- tested positive for steroids. The second time was a year suspension. He decided to retire because he said he had so many injuries that it would take steroids for him to recover enough to stay on schedule. He wanted to retire. He wasn't forced out of the sport. He said he was done. Yeah, because he couldn't do steroids anymore. I mean, basically, that's the statement. If I can't do steroids, if I can't use something to help me recover, Recover, I'm out. Well, the the other thing is is acting like uh, this isn't even working. It's not even like uh, that's you're taking into account that these rules are reasonable in the first place. Yeah, these, the word the the rules for weed is unreasonable. Anyways. And that's that's okay. That's Ronda Rousey recently. A bunch of people have come out in support of Nick Diaz. Ronda Rousey being one, she goes, you know what? I said this was during her recent press conference. I'm sorry. I know no one's asked me, but I have to say something. She says it's so not right for him to be suspended five years for marijuana. I'm against them testing for weed at all. It's not a performance enhancing drug. It has nothing to do with the Athletic Commission, and it's only tested for political reasons. They say you're. It's only for your safety, so you're not hurting yourself when you're out out there. Why don't they test for all the other things that could possibly hurt us and be under the influence while they're out there? We talked about this before. They don't test for alcohol. They don't test for cocaine. They don't test for anything. They really don't test for cocaine? Not while you're out there. Oh, man. And, and the they other... said there's no reason for them to be testing for weed. In athletics, it's a beautiful thing that separates us from every from politics. It shouldn't be involved. It's unfair that one person tests positive for steroids when that could actually hurt a person. Another person smokes a plant that makes them happy, gets suspended for five years, whereas a guy who could hurt someone gets a slap on the wrist. It's not fair. It doesn't make me a bad person for saying it. I cannot believe it's not being said more. Uh, free Nick Diaz. I know it's not Dana's decision either. Where their ruling kind of goes along with Nevada laws, too. Because Nevada laws for weed are... Medical marijuana allowed. Ridiculous. Medical marijuana allowed. Okay, yeah. 100%. Which Nick Diaz has in the state of California. Right, but I'm saying if even the non-medical, the the laws for those in Nevada are ridiculous if you get caught with it. So, but the, the fact that, again, and they told him to his face that we feel you're being disrespectful... To this athletic commission for testing positive for marijuana. That's, that's not. That's about. not what. It, it, there is no respect or disrespectfulness. No. It's supposed to be a co- like a court. Yeah, and it's not. I mean, and they, it's they not. said Kevin Ioli recently said yeah, it's basically a kangaroo court. It is an absolute abuse of authority for what they did to him. There's yeah, they, no they, way that they should ever have it. And in fact, his lawyers tell him, "We believe that you are going against my client's rights." We will see you in court because yeah. obviously we know what the decision is going to be. They asked him a series of questions. Nick Diaz went Dave Chappelle and decided to plead the fifth on everything. <laughs> there are so many amendments to choose from. Yeah, straight One, up. two, three, four, fifth. 
<laughs> he just, I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. I plead and, the fifth. And there was some and of the stuff. at that point, the lawyer came up to him and said, look, it came, came to the leg and said, look, he's going to plead the fifth on every single question you ask him. You might as well just skip to the end and we'll see you in court. And they said, no, we want a record that he is being insubordinate and refusing to answer yeah, our questions. Like when she goes, his rights? yeah. Well, because she, the thing that she was hammering on is, do you honestly believe that there's going to be criminal criminal prosecution from this? You know, Francisco she was kind of she was kind of weirdly Francisco hot. Francisco Aguilar, I'd hit that. She was weird looking. She I'd also was one of the people who said <laughs> after after he pled the fifth and went through the entire said that they should go for a lifetime ban for Nick Diaz from fighting. And, and the other commissioner said, and then you're going to say that's not personal. That's yeah, exactly. Everyone says ah, that's a little much. So again, though, if you go from you know, a year is probably what should be given him. But she says lifetime ban. Five's in the middle, right? <laughs> so he's lucky he didn't get 25 years. Right? I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, because, I mean, at this point, if they want to be a true commission, they shouldn't even bring him in. They should say docket number 011135. Show his priors. Yep. This is what it is. This is what he got busted for. This is what he got busted for. Here's These the are the numbers results. we have. You guys give us your – you shouldn't even have to – Why? this is what I don't understand. There's nothing he's going to tell them that they don't already know. Right. Right? They they have all the tests. Yep. They have hey, the paperwork. Two of your tests are consistent. One of them's not. Should we even count that not one? Right. Basically, they just want to put on a show. Right. Because oh, yeah. I, I They're completely – They're trying to flex their power. Right. I understand, a, I understand a hearing where you're trying to get some answers. But these are people who walked in with the answers in front of them, and then we're just like – I'm a bitch. Can you confirm that? Yeah, you're a bitch. You know, you know, you're a punk. Can you confirm that? Uh, fifth. Yeah. Fifth. Fifth. You know, and I can't believe that Matt Hughes, Matt, really, you're gonna call him a punk. You're like the only guy you're standing alone. (laughs) Most of uh, Twitter was went crazy during this whole thing. Gina Carano came out and says, you're not making Nick D as an example. She put the ice cream down. You're, Appearing as tyrants, <laughs> do not abuse your authority, and you need to apologize. It's ridiculous. Free Nick Diaz hashtag went crazy. Uh, Elias Theodou said, uh, that's why, gentle followers, you always go with the tie sex pill defense. <laughs> like yeah. Anderson Silva. Uh, Justin Gaethy, five-year suspension for marijuana. What a fucking joke. The Nevada State Athletic Commission thinks they're God. This is unbelievable. Where are the priorities? Michael Chesnia, suspension will be overturned. If not, let's get a White House petition started, which they have, by the way. I, which is crazy to me. Tim Kennedy, I'm a huge fan of Nick Diaz. I want to fight him. I love watching him fight. I don't care if my opponent uses marijuana. Free Nick Diaz. Nick, Derek Brunson, Nick Diaz suspended for five years is ridiculous. Means steroid users should get the death penalty, right? <laughs> Cole Miller, Fighters want to take a stand, refuse to fight in Nevada. Nobody will get any money. Which, by the way, Henry Cejudo and Leslie Smith have both yeah. come out and said they refuse to fight in the state of Nevada until Nick Diaz's suspension is lifted or overturned. But don't they? Don't they have to go through? No, if they fight, they can fight in Jersey. They can fight in California. They still because I thought that there's something that that the uh, Nevada Athletic Commission has to sign off for their any fights in America. No. No, it's, it's every if you go to, if you're going to fight in New Jersey, you're in the under the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. If you're in California, you're under the California State Athletic okay. Commission. If you're in Brazil, you're in the Brazilian Athletic yeah, Commission. Yeah, but do the states have where they recognize other people's rulings? They do. Yeah. They have the option to. Right. So when Nevada State Athletic Commission, actually, I think it was New Jersey was first that said we're banning TRT. These are the reasons. Immediately, the other ones are like, we agree. We agree. We yeah. will adopt the same methods. Now they don't have to, but they they, they try to. The other states have not said anything yet about no they they're they're smart they're sitting back and seeing what exactly the fallout is uh diego sanchez so wrong that a guy fights on roids and they take it out on you uh king mo says fuck the dumb shit i saw what happened nick free nick diaz is a movement uh seth wazinski way to blow it again so mind blowing blowing that uh they can former can keep a job so before we uh chris leave him five years fuck that free nick diaz make worry athletes need proper representation consistent penalties and rights I mean, absolutely. Just Dana White said they don't care what I think, have to say or think, and he kind of kept back. He also said he's been on in Australia the whole time. He has to come back to Las Vegas and see what all happened. He thinks there's something else going on that it wasn't just for marijuana that he got suspended for. However, people watching the press conference, which was free and on Fight Pass, it was 100 percent for yeah. marijuana. No, she. You could tell she. she it is political, one hundred percent political. She had a chip on her shoulder. She All is. of them, every time he'd answered, like they were in disgust. Yeah, one hundred percent against marijuana herself. Again, 
Joey was here. We argued this week. She looks anti dick to me too, but I, we uh, we argued back and forth through text messages. He says, "Well, he should have never given them a reason to to find him or do that. He should never have smoked pot to begin with, regardless. If he wants to be a fighter, I, he should never smoke pot." I like I like that argument because I hate when people use that, and this guy uses it a lot when it comes to privacy. It's like, well, why do you need privacy if you don't have nothing to hide? That's the same fucking thing, right? No, it's it's I don't know. the same thing. So you're saying he should never smoke pot if he wants to be a fighter? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. Okay. No. That's Joey's argument. Joey's no, argument is, is that if he wants to be a fighter, he should never smoke pot, ever. Because he knows that they're going to test for it. Now, my thing is, he is medically cleared. That's like my opinion. This is like a doctor saying, I'm going to give you a pain prescription. The Nevada State Aesthetic Commission, this is still under there, says you're not allowed to take pain pills while you're fighting. You can take them off to heal up, whatever, as long as you do not show up on your tests while you're fighting. Correct. Same thing. Marijuana is your painkiller. You're allowed to take it when you're not fighting as long as they don't have it when you're right. fighting. Well, I mean, a lot of guys, when they say, I'm taking some time off, yeah. it's because they're going to go do a regiment that they're not going to be able to test under. They're, they're going to get prescriptions from their doctor. Yep. They're going to be using supplements that they can't take the risk of, of being tested for. So they say, I'm taking time off. Because as long as you say you're taking time off, right, right. you can't be tested. Because yeah. you're not actually you're in not, competition. And exactly. And they, again, they, they've never they, – it's not like they're testing for pot when he's not in competition. It's just during. Well, well, the other thing is they're not – they didn't wait for these results to be even oh, no. like, considered. So yeah. you know there's something behind it. Like, exactly. You know, like you said, the results don't even match up, right? And they were just like, oh, still – they were like – Five were years. Waiting. They knew. I like mean, they were waiting. They, I mean, yeah. the lawyer said it seemed like they already had their – they straight up told him. It seems like you've already had your decision by the time – Right. You, before we got here. So we want to take this to court. I think this will be overturned 100%. Definitely. I, I like I t- as soon as Joey told me it, I was like it it'll be at least through appeal, it'll at least be cut in half if not dropped to a year. Yeah. I mean, it's just You're saying by first I now I'm going to change that I say 18 months. If you say that the first offense since they implemented the program is supposed to be 18 months. Yep. They they need to give him his 3% back cuz they should only fine him 30% and 18 months. Yeah. And it should be from the last fight. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and it's retrograded. Right. I mean, this, this, this ban is retrograded. Right. The five years is retrograded, but still, it's absolutely insane to me. Uh, Tanya Evinger defended her belt up against Penny Kainazad. Beat the shit out of her. Victus 14, TKO round two, three minute, 34 seconds. Uh, Deanne Barnett over Katajaya Kanakapaya. Kapa? Kapa. That's what the umlauts mean, right? Uh, just have like a stroke or something. <laughs> Roxanne Moderoffrey gets a nice win over Marina Morales. TKO. I didn't think she had it in her. I mean, submissions, yes, but to actually punch somebody. Roxanne's so nice. I think I, she's starting to get angry. I think she realizes yeah. what she needs to do. Andrea Lee over Rachel Oscarovich. Cindy Dandios over Megan Anderson. That was your main event on Fight Pass. Uh, yeah. What do you think of the fights? Uh I think that uh, I only some of the these girls, they, they, some of these girls, they need to get them into the UFC. Some of these girls need to come back to the UFC. You know. All right. We have three fights going down this weekend. Uh, first one being Titan FC 35, which is going down September 19th. That's tomorrow on Fight Pass. You can check out the whole uh, official card. Three title belts on the line. Pat Healy going up against Rick Hahn. Andre Harrison against Desmond Green. Tim Elegant against Felipe Efren. That's your lightweight, featherweight, and flyweight titles. Uh, some other names you might recognize on the card. Steven Seiler, E.J. Brooks, Alex Soto, uh, Jake Smith. Yeah, that welterweight fight, Zane and uh, Bilal, that's going to be a good fight too. Yeah? Yeah. All right. You can also check out World Series of Fighting number, what is this? 24? 23. World Series of Fighting 23, which is going down today on NBC Sports Network. This is going to be... Uh, this this one's really interesting to me. You have Justin Gaethje defending his belt against Luis Palomino again. This is a rematch uh, in the lightweight division. David Branch, who is the current World Series of Fighting middleweight holder, title holder, is going to be now fighting for the inaugural World Series of Fighting light heavyweight belt. So this is a guy who could hold two belts in the division hmm. in World Series of Fighting. David Branch going against Terry Holder. Also, uh, crime fighter Phoenix Jones going up against Roberto Young in a catchweight. Remember that guy from Seattle? Where's yeah. The, where's the costumes? Runs around. Yeah, check him out. Yeah, and he's in, <laughs> and he's in a league where he can still do his costume. 
Can he? Yeah. <laughs> and then Bellator, the big tent event, is happening uh, tomorrow in San Jose. Gene Fields is already there. He's sent some pictures. Yeah. I'm going to find out if we can actually use any of them. <laughs> yeah. This will be live on Spike. You can see the prelims on Spike.com, but you can go to the main card at Spike. This is going to be kickboxing and MMA. This is Bellator fighting and glory. Uh, Scott Coker says he wants to bring on uh, a pride-like atmosphere, just like Pride Fighting Championships. Going right. to have big ring entrances uh, where they introduce all the fighters. Um, you got obviously Lene Hart doing the intros. Um, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, you got one night of fights where we're going to have a four-man tournament: King Mo going against Linton Vassell, and then Emmanuel Newton going against Phil Davis for the light heavyweight uh, tournament. They will then fight. Whoever wins those two fights will fight at the end of the night as the co-main event to see who wins against Liam McCurry or Tito Ortiz as your main event for the title, the light heavyweight title. Can we just call him Liam McGregor? No, it's McGreary. No, I'm just saying. I mean, that's Bellator's version of McGregor. (laughs) (laughs) For the vacant glory light heavyweight championship, this is in kickboxing. Also going to have Saul Calavari going against Zach Milikawasa. Josh Thompson making his debut. Oh, the punk, yeah. Yeah, Mike Brazonlius. And then Paul Daly going back to some kickboxing for glory against Fernando Gonzalez. Oh, so Paul Daly's – he's not MMA. He's he, kickboxing in this one? For this for this night, yes. Oh. He is going to be kickboxing. So is Fernando Gonzalez, who is also a Bellator MMA fighter, but they will be doing kickboxing for this night. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Pretty now interesting. I, I actually – I would like to – I'm going to – Check this out, Spike TV doc, tonight. Yeah, just for the Paul Daly part, I want to see that. I mean, I want to see the heavyweight. I mean, the main card I did. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the, the kickboxing thing, I was ho-hum about. But I think it would be interesting to see him. There we go. And that watch. is your night and weekend of fights. That is the recap of all the news. Uh, let us know what you think. I want to know what you guys think. Uh, if it's five-year ban is too much, not enough, you free Nick Diaz or you fuck Nick Diaz? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Do you know what I hate about the Free Nick Diaz is that Shell Shonen is selling hella shirts. Hell yeah, Free Nick I'm, Diaz. But I don't like that it says, don't be a bitch, homie. Yeah. <laughs> free Nick Diaz. I think you just say Free Nick Diaz. I actually made my own shirt. At Did you? It. it says Free Nick Diaz on it. Free Nick says. Diaz. You should. But said I am wearing my sport. I'm wearing my Don't Be Scared Homie shirt today. Don't be scared. That's it. Yeah. Wraps it up. Wraps right. it up. Not even say the good night. No, but, but we'll, we'll cut him out of it. That's Joey. Well, no, but I'm keeping this now. Yep. Oh, yeah. We'll All get right. you right about here. I want right you to about Joey. now, you'll hear Joey and now. go. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Split <laughs> Decision. <laughs> One of the dumbest endings to a show ever, possibly. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening. You can find us on Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes, SplitDecisionMMA.com, and now iHeartRadio. So tell your friends. Spread the word around because uh, we like doing this, and, and we like to know people are listening and having a good time like we are. We bring it to you once a week from the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios, brought to you by StrongboardBalance.com. Get on board. Change the way you work out. StrongboardBalance.com. And, of course, MyMMANews.com that will be at the big MMA Classic Expo. And you can find tickets for that in Syracuse, New York, on October 3rd and 4th at MMAClassicExpo.com. Pretty sure that's it. So from the We Law Family Inc. Studios, Stuart and Dodge saying have a good night. We'll see you at the fights.